Hosea, chapter 13. When Ephraim spoke, there was trembling. He was lifted up in Israel. But through Baal, through Baal, he became guilty and he died. And now they sin more and more and make for themselves molded images from their silver, idols according to their skill, all of them the work of craftsmen. They say to them, let the men who slaughter kiss the calves. Therefore they shall be like a morning cloud and like dew that goes away early, like chaff blown off from a threshing floor and like smoke from a window. But I am Yahuwah, your Elohim, since the land of Mitzrayim. And an Elohim besides me you shall not know, for there is no Savior besides me. I knew you in the wilderness, in the land of drought. When they were fed, they were satisfied. They were satisfied and their heart was exalted, therefore they forgot me. So I am become like a lion to them, like a leopard I watch by the way. Like a bear robbed of her young, I attack them and rip open the enclosure of their heart. And there I devour them like a lion, a wild beast, tear them apart. You have destroyed yourself, O Israel, but your help is in me. Where is your king? Now to save you in all your cities and your rulers of whom you said, give me a king and a ruler. I gave you a king in my displeasure, but I took him away in my wrath. The crookedness of Ephraim is bound up. His sin is hidden. Pains of a woman in labor shall come upon him. He is not a wise son, for it is not the time that he should delay at the breaking forth of children. From the power of Sheol I ransom them, from death I redeem them. Where is your plague, O death? Where is your destruction, O Sheol? Repentance is hidden from my eyes. Though he bears fruit among his brothers, an east wind comes. A wind from Yahuwah comes up from the wilderness, and it dries up his fountain, and his spring becomes dry. It plunders a treasure of all desirable objects. Shomeron is held guilty, for she has rebelled against her Elohim. They fall by the sword. Their infants are dashed in pieces, and their pregnant women ripped open. So, I'm trying to get better at interrupting the Creator when He's speaking. And this has been years in the works. And so, I'm trying to remember when we get together like this each week and read the Word together to let the Father speak and then come back and comment on the things that He's saying. Because he's the creator, not me. And uh, he absolutely deserves to speak before I do. So now that we've read his words together, hopefully you've got your Bibles out. Let's go ahead and dive into this a little bit. And also, you might have noticed last week, uh, two for one. Yeah, um, had a little glitch in the Matrix. Um, the Hosea 11 and 12 and 9 and 10 videos posted on the same day. Oops, whatever. Y'all's will be done. So let's begin at 13.1 again. When Ephraim spoke, Ephraim here being synonymous with Israel, the ten northern tribes. Okay? As discussed previously throughout the entire book of Hosea. When Ephraim, a.k.a. Israel, spoke, there was trembling. He was lifted up in Israel. So Ephraim had esteem. Others would tremble at the words of Ephraim. He was lifted up in Israel. But through Baal, through Baal, false worship, idolatry, the golden calf, anyone, he became guilty and he died. He lost his esteem, Ephraim did. And now they sin more and more. Sin being 1 John 3 verse 4, sin is lawlessness. And I know the vast majority of y'all know that, but we have new people here each week. By the way, uh, do your homework. If you need to pause the video and take notes or pause the video and check the cross references, by all means, do that. We should study this word. We should eat this word with a fork and a knife, cut it into bite-sized pieces, as one of you all commented last week, so that we can chew it up, digest it, absorb it. So 
check my cross references. Have your word in front of you. If you're driving right now, when you get to where you're going, pull your Bible out. Check my cross references. And now they sin. 1 John 3 verse 4. Sin is lawlessness and all who do sin do lawlessness. Written by Yochanan, John, in the New Testament. Now they are lawless. They sin all the more and make for themselves molded images from silver. Are we allowed to do that? No. Exodus chapter 20. Make no graven images. Well, it's, it's not an image. It's just a carving that we venerate in our church system that allows us to uh, focus our veneration on the object first and then up to Elohim. Okay. Uh, no. First of all, no. Make no graven images. Second, uh, why are you praying to the Virgin Mary? Show me a single verse in here in the Bible where it says that that's allowable. There is no God but God. Make for themselves molded images from their silver, idols according to their skill. And so idolatry is, idolatry is spiritual, but it, the physical um, facsimile to idolatry is whoring, as we've discussed over and over again. That's why Hosea is writing all of this. The, the whole parable here is in Hosea chapter 1. Yah comes to Hosea like off the bat and says, go marry this whore. Okay, and he does, and it becomes a parable, it becomes a witness, it becomes a metaphor for the relationship between Hosea, the man of Elohim, and his wife, who's a whore, and the relationship between Elohim, the husband, and his wife, the bride, us, who have whored. And I know some of us, you know, no, we've, we've had been with one partner, or we're abstinent, okay, but what have you idolized? Because the idolatry portion here is the spiritual equivalent of physical whoring. They made idols according to their skill, all of them the work of craftsmen. They say to them, let the men who slaughter kiss the calves. Now, Ephraim was not slaughtering animals to Elohim. And it pains me to even say this. They were slaughtering children to false gods, Baal. As of the time of this recording, I have a four-month-old. Who could look upon a child and think, hey, you know what, I'm going to kill this so I can garner favor from some false god. <sighs> if I'm being honest, it infuriates me. It infuriates me. Okay, Bear, cool story. Do you have a cross-reference for that? Yeah, a couple pages back. Hosea 9.13. Yah speaking. I have seen Ephraim like sore, planted in a pleasant place, but Ephraim shall bring out his children to the killer. Okay. Hosea 5.2. And revolters have gone deep in slaying, and I reprove them all. I've known Ephraim, and Israel has not been hidden from me. For now, O Ephraim, you have whored. Israel is defiled. Their deeds do not allow them to turn back to their Elohim, for the spirit of whoring is among them, and they do not know Yahuwah. Revolters have gone deep in slaying. So let the men who slaughter children kiss the calves of Baal, false idol worship. This is what Ephraim is now known for. They were known, they were esteemed. People trembled when they spoke in Israel, and now they're known for slaughtering their children and worshiping false gods. Seen any parallels here? By the way, it's commonly accepted that the lost tribe of Ephraim is uh, the United States and possibly the Western world. But we don't kill kids here. We would never do that unless they're still in the womb but I digress. Therefore they shall be like a morning cloud and like dew that goes away early. Just vanishes. Like chaff blown off from a threshing floor, separating the wheat from the chaff, anyone? And like smoke from a window. 
But I am Yahuwah, your Elohim, since the land of Mitzrayim, Egypt. And an Elohim besides me you shall not know. Now, it's interesting, biblically. Yahuwah Elohim, the Lord our God, never says, never says there are no other gods. And don't just take that and run with it. Balance it with the word. What does the word say? The word says, you shall have no other gods before me. It's not that there aren't other gods. They are lower G, lowercase g gods, not capital yod Hey vav Hey, Yahuwah, Yahweh, Yahweh. Pick your pronunciation. Because all of these other things were created by the Creator. And idolatry is when you are worshiping something that was created, not the Creator. What is worship? See, in Christendom, we seem to think that worship is akin to worship music, and therefore to worship, there must be music. And that's certainly a form of it. Habakkuk, the minor prophet, King David. Yeah, there were, there were songs. There were dancing. Miriam, Moshe's sister, songs, dancing. It's not the only form of worship. Shaul of Tarsus, the apostle Paul in the New Testament, his form of worship was subjecting his flesh to the conviction of the spirit. Worship is where you focus your attention. Worship is doing Yah's will, not your will. Worship is denying of the flesh so that you can walk in faith. And so, if you are worshiping anything other than Elohim, you're in idolatry. If you're focusing your attention and your intent on something that's been created rather than the creator, you're engaged in idolatry. But I am Yahuwah, your Elohim, since the land of Mitzrayim, and Elohim besides me you shall not know. For there is no Savior, capital S, Savior, prophesying a Messiah here, beside me. This comes back to the concept of Echad. Shema Yisrael, Yahuwah Elohanu, Yahuwah Echad. Which is Numbers, Deuteronomy, still in Numbers, still in Numbers, Deuteronomy 6, right here, Deuteronomy 6 verse 4. Followed by, and you shall love Yahuwah your Elohim with all your heart and with all your being and with all your might. And these words, capital W, words, the word made flesh. Jesus is the word made flesh. These words, which I am commanding you today, shall be in your heart and you shall impress them upon your children and shall speak of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. The word, Torah. The commands, the instruction manual for people. Shema Yisrael, hear, O Israel. Yahuwah, our Elohim, Yahuwah is one. So how is Yah the Savior? Because I thought the Savior was Mashiach, Messiah. Yep. Uh, also, you can do some biblical checking on this. The Mashiach, the anointed, is a title that we have given to Christ. That's what Christ means, anointed means Mashiach, because he is the king, the prophesied king. There's another king in the Bible who is, Koresh is his name, King Sovereign Koresh, has to do with the Babylonian exile, who is referred to as a Mashiach, as a Messiah, because he was doing the work of the Father, rescuing his people at the time. Now, he's not the Messiah, but he's labeled as Messiah. Interesting. And so here we have this prophecy in Hosea 13, verse 4. For there is no Savior beside me, which dovetails into a question that many of y'all have asked. Dude, explain the Trinity to me. That's a very long video. Um, so I'll give you the broad brush jokes of this. The Trinitarian concept began in my opinion, is what you're getting here, began 
as a good-hearted effort to explain the different facets of Elohim as we, ex- or as we experience him. And many people have pointed out that Elohim is plural. In the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. What's the plurality? And if you get into like sidebar, side quest, you get into like the Gnostics, Gnosis, meaning hidden wisdom. They'll say that um, it was the duality of the creator, the the feminine and the masculine and the, and the light and the dark. And that no, I'll read the Bible, do the Bible. You see a lot of Gnostics out there just living a super fulfilled life, a blessed life, a Deuteronomy 28 life. No, they're living the second half of Deuteronomy 28. Simple as that. Transgression. And so the Trinity began as a good-hearted attempt to explain the facets with which we experience Yahuwah. The first is as the Father. Father Yah, Abba Yahuwah. The Creator. The Creator, uh, allow me this, asterisk. Because if we go to the book of John, John chapter 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with Elohim, and the Word was Elohim. He was in the beginning with Elohim. This is Yeshua, the Word made flesh. What was the Word before the New Testament? The word of Yah, the instructions, Torah. And see, just like people have their instructions, the earth and the sea and the air has their instructions. The animals have their instructions. And when the earth walks counter to its instruction, we call it either a miracle or a disaster. How many times have you seen water run uphill? Zero. Because the earth has its instruction, its Torah, that was established from the foundations of the earth, from before it started. And if you saw water run uphill one time, it would be enough to shatter your paradigm for that single transgression that you observed. And yet, the Father has given us rules. See, he's also given us free will. And people walk counter to the instruction, the Torah, of the Father every day. And it's because sin, which is transgression of the law, has become so commonplace that we don't even bat an eye when we see it. But if we saw water run uphill one time, we'd lose our mind. If you cut a tree down with a chainsaw and it fell up into the sky instead of onto the ground, you would lose your mind. Everything you know would be wrong now. You'd question everything. But people walking counter to their Torah has become so commonplace. We live in such a fallen world that it's it's a nothing burger, man. Uh, yeah, of course, that's the way people behave. So in the beginning was the Word. He was in the beginning with Elohim. And all came to be through Him. And without Him, not even one came to be that came to be. So John's clearly talking about Messiah here. So in the beginning was Elohim with the word and the word was the creative force behind all of creation. And so when you worship the created, you are denying Messiah. Because Messiah, Yeshua, made everything. Mm. Okay. But we have this personage of Yah made flesh. The man that Jacob wrestled with before he was renamed to Israel. The man of Melchizedek that blessed Abraham. The host of the army of the heavens, or the commander of the host of the heavens, that Joshua does obeisance to on the road into the promised land. Manova, the father of Samson, who was visited by a capital M messenger, who does wondrously in the presence of Manova and his wife, and then ascends in a flame of fire. These are all called Christophanies, by the way. Archetypes of of Christ. The personage of God on earth. Before we see Yeshua of Nazareth in the four canonical Gospels. Well, why does he become flesh? Well, he must, to interact directly with his people, 
because he his word does not change. Malachi 3 verse 6, he changes not. And any man who looked upon his face would die. Sin cannot exist in the presence of the Father. Isaiah. So this is clearly, it's Yah. It's the creator, but in a different form. Wrapped in flesh for a moment so that we might interact with him. So that's of Yah, that is Yah, but it's separate from our understanding of the Father. And then you have the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, which John chapter 16 shall convict you concerning sin, righteousness, and judgment. It's an emanation of the spirit of almost like the mind of Elohim that convicts us throughout the day, moment to moment in our walk to, <coughs> excuse me, to steer us through conviction to do the Father's will, not our own. And over time, this Trinitarian understanding became more and more dogmatic and fleshed out that it became a cornerstone of the Christian faith and it required a confession of belief in the Trinity in order to be accepted into many of the different denominations. And while technically it's true, that understanding that there are three distinct separate personages violates Echad, Deuteronomy 6 verse 4. One, Yahuwah is one. This is one of the reasons that Christians have such a hard time witnessing to the Jews. Because the Jews view Christianity as polytheistic, as multiple gods. God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Three in one. Well, the moment you say three, they're out. Because they know the Shema. The Shema is the most prized prayer in all of the Old Testament. Shema Yisrael, Yahuwah Eloheinu, Yahuwah Echad. Echad is one. Hear, O Israel, Yahuwah our Elohim, Yahuwah is one. But he became flesh because he's the Torah made flesh to kinsman redeemer, pay a debt that we couldn't pay because only a, a close relative can redeem you to come here to pay your debt that you couldn't pay so that you could enter back into the house, not as a bond servant. Well, you start as a bond servant. But then it, forever, if you confess your love for the master of the house. Not as a slave, I should say, but as a bondservant. And so the Trinity began as a good-hearted effort to explain the different ways that we experience Elohim. Because they are distinct. But it became dogmatic like everything else. And you can read the words of Shaul of Tarsus, the Apostle Paul in Colossians chapter 2 and see that these dogmas are what was nailed to the stake, the steros, the cross, if you will. Not the law, the dogmas were. Shall we continue? It's, we're, what, four, five, four verses in, 23 minutes long. I knew you in the wilderness, in the land of drought. Yeah, during their 40 years uh, walking in the wilderness, Israel. When they were fed, they were satisfied. Yeah, how many times they said, did you bring us out here to starve to death and die? They were satisfied and their heart was exalted, therefore they forgot me. When things are going well, we tend to distance ourselves from Elohim. It's when things are going poorly that we become closer and closer to him. We're reminded just how dependent upon him we are. My brothers, count it all joy when you fall into various trials for the proving of your faith. Which means in the good times... When the Father has blessed you with power and authority, you should be as much or more humble and submitted to him and seek his face even more because it all comes from him anyway. So I am become like a lion to them, like a leopard I watch by the way, like a bear robbed of her young I attack them and rip open the enclosure of their heart. And there, in the enclosure of their heart, I devour them like a lion, a wild beast tear them apart. So all of these animals, the lion, the leopard, and the bear, are known for the way that they attack ruthlessly, methodically, in the case of the big cats. And your likelihood of survival as a man, if you encounter a bear robbed of her young, very low. 
very, very low. And so this is an image here of the relentless pursuit of the father, in spite of the fact that Ephraim is whoring and burning their children to false gods. The father still knocks on the door of their heart, rips open the enclosure of their heart. That warrants an underline. You have destroyed yourself, O Israel. You did this to yourself. You reap what you sow. Read Deuteronomy 28, all of it again. This punishment that Ephraim is going through is not because the father is an unjust father. It's because he's a just father and you reap what you sow. They did this. But your help is in me. If they would repent, if they would shuv, if they would turn from their wicked ways and confess, as we'll see in chapter 14, assuming I don't take an hour to do, what, 16 verses. You have destroyed yourself, O Israel, but your help is in me. Where is your king now to save you in all your cities and your rulers of whom you said, give me a king and rulers? Remember, the prophet Samuel stood up the first kingship in Israel under Saul, Shaul. Saul was not a great guy. And Samuel said to them, hey, you don't want a king. You're, in fact, you're supposed to be a nation of kings and priests. You read that in Revelation chapter 1, as well as in the Old Testament, Exodus 19, verse 6. Revelation chapter 1. Where is it? Do, 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 do. That's why. That's Jude. I was one page over, Bear. Okay, copy that. I'm like, guys, I know what's here. Revelation 1 6. We'll start with 5. And from Yeshua Messiah, the trustworthy witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. The ruler of who? The kings of the earth. This doesn't just mean secular kings who are appointed over nation states. You are supposed to be a king. I am supposed to be a king. Well, how could you say that, Bear? Because look at the next verse. To him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and has made us kings and priests to his Elohim and Father. To him be esteem and rule forever and ever. Amen. The ideal state of man is his king and priest. And so Samuel, the prophet Samuel, set up King Shaul, Shaul. But he told him, he said, you're not supposed to have a king. You're supposed to be a king. And I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody else has kings. We want a king too. Give us a king. And Samuel said, hey, he's going to take the best of your horses and he's going to make your daughters work for him. And he's going to take your sons to war and he's going to take a portion of your wine and your grain and your oil. And they said, uh, yeah, sounds good. We want one of those. We don't want to be responsible. We want one of those. Just like Moshe, when the Ten Commands were received at Mount Sinai, everybody was supposed to go up the mountain. And they said, nah, we're good. You go up there. You be the intercessor. You go meet with Yah. Come back and tell us what he says. And he comes back down the mountain and he sees that Aaron has made this golden calf, drops the first set of stone tablets, getting back to 13.1 idolatry the golden calf we're supposed to be a nation of kings and priests not have one put over us and when they did israel under king saul not good not good because the leadership directs the entire direction the entire vibe the ethos of everyone being led of the entire nation I mean, just audit the United States of America right now, 2024. Tell me that our king has done a great job. Verse 11. I gave you a king in my displeasure, but I took him away in my wrath. And if you've read uh, 1 Kings, 2 Kings, 1 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles, you can see how quickly kings are laid low by Elohim when they fail to follow his commands. And this is worth repeating. The promise that is made to King David that a king
king from the line of David will not cease to be upon the throne of Israel, all of Israel, Judah and Israel, requires, requires that that king keeps the commands. And you can go to Matthew chapter 1 and read it, and it clearly states that Messiah is of the tribe of Judah in the line of David. And that's because in order to fulfill one half of the Old Testament prophecies regarding Mashiach ben David, the righteous king in the line of King David, Mashiach had to keep the commands. And that's why we can say that there's no sin in Messiah because sin is transgression of the law, which goes to what would Jesus do? He'd keep Torah. All of it. All of it. And he was without sin. It means he never broke Torah. 1 John 3 verse 4. Look it up. I gave you a king in my displeasure, but I took him away in my wrath. The crookedness of Ephraim is bound up. His sin is hidden. Pains of a woman in labor. Oh, like the labor pains of Matthew 24 shall come upon him. He is not a wise son. And this is an interesting turn of phrase. For it is not the time that he should delay at the breaking forth of children. Some other translations have that a little bit better. Uh, this is one of those rare times where in the scriptures it's like, mm, you could have picked those words better. But the scriptures is was translated with the intent of getting as literal of the as literal a translation of the original source text as possible. What this is saying is basically, hey, you're still stuck in kindergarten. You shouldn't have, like, you have the understanding of a kindergartner. You should not have ascended to a higher grade level. You still belong with the little kids. He is not a wise son. You still belong with the little kids. What's a wise son? Proverbs 13. A wise son accepts his father's discipline. Hmm. You look at Proverbs 13, 13. He who despises the word is destroyed, but he who fears the command is rewarded. The Torah of the wise is a fountain of life, turning one away from the snares of death. Hmm. Interesting. Ephraim was not a wise son. How do I be wise, Bear? Read the Proverbs. The beginning of getting wisdom is get wisdom. From the power of Sheol, the place of the dead, I ransom them. From death, I redeem them. Even in spite of all this, in spite of the way Ephraim has behaved, and it's this is just this is analogous to Hosea going to his wife and paying her whore fee, fifteen pieces of silver, if I'm remembering correctly, to buy her back, to redeem her, to bring him back into her house. To love her in spite of her whoring. In spite of her heart. In spite of the fact that she didn't want to be joined to him in the first place. From the power of Sheol I ransom them. From death I redeem them. Where is your plague, O death? Where is your destruction, O Sheol? Repentance is hidden from my eyes. Repentance. They need to repent. Teshuvah. Turn, shuv, confess. And uh, Apostle Paul, Shaul of Tarsus, quotes this in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 55. Where is your sting, O death? I'm sure you've heard that before. Though he, Ephraim, analogous to Israel, bears fruit among his brothers, an east wind comes. We've talked about this east wind, that this east wind is what typically brought drought. And uh, notice that drought was brought up in 13.5. And drought brings famine, and famine brings warfare and plague. So the, an east wind is ominous. Though he bears fruit among his brothers, an east wind comes. A wind from Yahuwah comes up from the wilderness, and it dries up his fountain. Drought. And his spring becomes dry. Drow. Drought. It plunders a treasure of all desirable objects. Shomeron is held guilty. Shomeron, Samaria, the capital of the northern tribes at false worship, led by Ahab and Jezebel. Bad place. Also, the woman at the well. That's where Yeshua, that takes place, the woman at the well. 
and it's the parable of the Good Samaritan. Samaritan comes from Samaria, which is the modern-ish Aramaic word of 2,000 years ago for Shomeron. I come first but for the lost sheep of the house of Israel, says Messiah. Israel. The ten northern tribes. In false worship, as we're reading about here. Shomeron is held guilty for she has rebelled against her Elohim. They fall by the sword. Their infants are dashed in pieces and their pregnant women ripped open. Not by Yah. Yah is about the preservation of life. Over and over and over again, he preserves our life. The whole point of Messiah was to preserve your life. By the way, the original Stop the Bleed protocol, the woman with the blood issue. Messiah. Yeah. They fall by the sword. Their infants are dashed. And pregnant women ripped open. Not by Yah by the Assyrians, by the Babylonians, when they go into exile and captivity, because they didn't obey Yah in the first place. And even then, they weren't destroyed. He could have destroyed them. And how do we know who was killed and who wasn't? Uh, records don't survive to this day. And in fact, records weren't generally keeping, uh, keeping, kept, sorry. Tell me you're sleep deprived without telling me you're sleep deprived. Um, records weren't generally kept because we're not supposed to number the children of Israel. They're supposed to once a year make an offering of a half shekel at the temple and then we count the half shekels. Yeah, you don't number the father's people. Yet and still, it, I'm guessing you have a social security number, don't you? I'm guessing you have an FEIN, Federal Employee Identification Number. I'm guessing your LLC or your business or the one that you work for is filed with the state and federal government and assigned a number. That's okay. It's just systematized wickedness. No big deal. Yeah. America is the promised land. Is it? Why do we not behave that way? We've got some nerve saying we're the promised land. We certainly don't behave like it. Why? Probably because of our wealth. What the Father's talking about here in 6. When they were fed, they were satisfied. They were satisfied and their heart was exalted. Therefore, they forgot me. As of the time of this recording, um, and the chips will fall where they may, who knows what the future brings, but as of the time of this recording, President Trump was shot in the ear in an attempted assassination uh, and or PSYOP um, an hour ago. Probably gives you a little bit of context on where my mind's at right now. Who knows? What will transpire in the week between me recording this and you seeing it? I have no idea, but we deserve whatever we get. And praise Yah that he preserves a remnant, but I will remind you a remnant is small. It's not two billion people. These infants being dashed into pieces. Think about the mental imagery of that. What they would do. So they'd pick up the baby by the foot and just swing it into whatever hard object they could find. Babies lack structural integrity. And so not only does the blunt force trauma kill them, but they come apart. Pregnant women ripped open. Not to get political or pick a side here, but didn't that happen October 7th, 2023? When Hamas attacked Israel. So Hamas has put themselves in the same category as the Assyrians and the Babylonians. And again, I'll remind you, the nation state of Israel over there in the Middle East is different than the people group of Israel in this book. Because Israel, Genesis 32, means he who is striving with Elohim, he who is overcome with Elohim, and he who is ruling. Oh, there's that word again, kings and priests ruling with Elohim. It does not mean a secular people group of questionable genetics over there in the Middle East in a piece of land that was awarded to them in 1948 by the British post-World War II. Now, some of actual Israel is in nation-state Israel, but the two are not the same. 
and you don't get a free pass uh, for your own horrors, just as Yah is showing to Ephraim here. You don't get a free pass for your own horrors just because you slapped a label on who you think you are today. Because Yah knows our hearts. Yah judges our works. Yah knows what we're capable of and whether or not we're doing our best to live up to what we're capable of. Chapter 14. O Israel, return to Yahuwah your Elohim, for you have stumbled by your crookedness. Return to Shuva, Repent. Take words with you. You know what? Let me let me let Yah speak. And then we'll come back and do commentary. <sighs> o Israel, return to Yahuwah your Elohim, for you have stumbled by your crookedness. Take words with you and return to Yahuwah. Say to him, take away all crookedness and accept what is good. And we render the bull of our lips. Ashur, Assyria, does not save us. We do not ride on horses, nor ever again do we say to the work of our hands, our mighty ones, for the fatherless finds compassion in you. I shall heal their backsliding. I shall love them spontaneously, for my displeasure has turned away from him. I shall be like the dew to Israel. He shall blossom like the lily and strike out his roots like Lebanon. His branches shall spread and his splendor shall be like an olive tree. An olive tree, Romans 11, grafted in. And his fragrance like Lebanon. Those who dwell under his shadow shall return. They shall revive like grain and blossom like the vine and become as fragrant as the wine of Lebanon. What more has Ephraim to do with idols? It is I who answer and look after him. I'm like a green cypress tree. Your fruit comes from me. Who is wise and understands these words, discerning and knowing them? For the ways of Yahuwah are straight. And the righteous walk in them, but the transgressors stumble in them. O Israel, return to Yahuwah your Elohim. Israel, you are Israel. If you believe that Yeshua is Hamashiach, that Jesus is the Christ, you are in covenant relationship with the man from Judah, Matthew chapter 1, who came to save the lost sheep of the house of Israel, which is you. Those who struggle with Elohim, those who have overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony with Elohim, and those who are ruling, Exodus 19 verse 6 and Revelation 1 verse 6, kings and priests ruling with Elohim, that's Israel. The descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that's Israel. And even if you don't have the DNA, which is why Yeshua says, don't trouble yourself with useless genealogies. You're grafted in, Romans 11, because you're marrying into the family because you came into a blood covenant by the blood of the Lamb who redeemed you so that you could be part of the family again, enter back into Dad's house. O Israel, return to Yahuwah. Your Elohim. Not the Elohim. Not an Elohim, your Elohim, your God, your creator, your the great I am, your Echad, one. Return to him, the author of everything, made flesh to be your salvation. For you have stumbled in your crookedness. Yes, you have. How do I know? Because I have too. Because it's the condition of human beings. From the time of the garden forward until Messiah returns. Take words with you. And return to Yahuwah. Take words with you. Confess your sin. Return to Elohim. Confess your sin. Say to him, take away all crookedness. Father, make me new and accept what is good. I give you my heart. And we render the bull of our lips. The bulls of our lips. That's their slaughtering. That's their sacrifice. Accept the sacrifice of my lips. Accept my confession. As sure the Assyrians does not save us. No government, no military is going to save us. We do not ride on horses I'm not wrapped around the axles on my escalator, my pickup truck, or these material things. 
nor ever again do we say to the works of our hands, our mighty ones, I'm done with idolatry. I'm done with false worship. For the fatherless finds compassion in you. Yeah, fatherless because you were kicked out of the house by your actions. And your brother, your kinsman redeemer, paid a price that you couldn't pay so that you could enter back into the house again. And look what Yahuwah says. I shall heal their backsliding. And this is beautiful because you're backsliding. The weakness of your flesh. Here, heal. Heal. We heal disease. We heal broken physiology. The great healer, Yahuwah. He views our backsliding as almost like a like a sickness that alleviates a lot of the condemnation, doesn't it? Like it's a condition you have that can be healed, that can be fixed. And that you're not defined by the condition that you have. How many people do you know that have cancer or MS or pick a thing, cerebral palsy? They're still good people. They're still Yaz people. They just have a condition. The condition that we have is our backsliding, our ego, our idolatry, our whoring, our sin. But he will heal it. That's beautiful. I shall love them spontaneously. For my displeasure has turned away from him. In a moment. Because they came with their words. In a moment, because they confessed. Not only is this prophetic of Messiah, but it's beautiful. Have you ever just confessed, just prayed to the Father, please, Father, just take this thing from me. Heal me of this. And it's like a weight is lifted instantly spontaneously I shall love them spontaneously for my displeasure has turned away from him all we had to do was admit we were wrong all we had to do was subordinate our ego and say please father forgive me I've sinned I've made a mistake and maybe father I can't guarantee that I'll never do it again but please heal me of this and I will do my best to not intentionally engage in this behavior whatever it might be gossiping or whoring or pornography or um, gluttony or Lashon Hara or whatever or idolatry or sloth or being a separatist and seeking after your, after your own desire whatever it is you have to confess and in that moment you confess it and it's just gone and it doesn't mean it'll never happen again but it means now, like this is what Shaul of Tarsus, the Apostle Paul said, I do not sin but by the law. And now I know it's on my radar. Right? Like part one, step the first step in AA is admitting you have a problem. Right? And like once you admit it, once you vocalize it, once you confess you have a problem, it's now on your radar. And you can do your best to avoid it. I shall be like the dew to Israel that waters the plant, brings forth life. He shall blossom like the lily. Flowers, beauty. So this is restoration, restoration of life, restoration of beauty. Strike out roots like Lebanon, restoration of strength. His branches shall spread. This is esteem and reach, network effect, if you will. And his splendor shall be like an olive tree. Oh, yeah, there it is. Grafted in again. Grafted into what? I'm grafted into the tree of life, which is what? An olive tree. Which is what? Israel. Oh, Israel, return. And his fragrance, like Lebanon, the restoration of pleasantness. Those who dwell under his shadow shall return. Under the shadow of a tree, protected from the hot sun, provided for with fruit and firewood and 
shade and building materials and evaporative cooling and yeah, trees are amazing. They should revive like grain. So grain, provision, Give us this day our daily bread and blossom like the vine. I am the vine and you are the branches. Read John 15. If you haven't read John 15 lately, read John 15. All the way. If you love me, keep my commands as I have kept my father's commands, says Yeshua. If you love Messiah, keep his commands as he has kept his father's commands. Well, what are his commands? Love the Lord your God, love your neighbor as yourself. Yeah, but what is that? He's quoting Torah. He kept the Father's commands. Why? Because he is the Father made flesh. And if you are a follower of Messiah, and Messiah is Yah, and Yah does not change Malachi 3 verse 6, then it's impossible for Messiah to change what Yah said, to change what the Father said. And newsflash, he didn't. He didn't change a word of it. He walked it out perfectly as a model for you, 1 Peter 2.21, because in him there is no sin. And sin is transgression of the law, which means as a follower of Messiah, we need to do our best to not transgress the law. If you love me, keep my commands as I have kept my father's commands. Yeshua kept Torah. In his own words, he confessed it in John chapter 15. But we don't have to do that anymore because my pastor said so, or my priest said so, or my rabbi, or my bishop, or whatever, because some dude said so. Because I, I read a Facebook post. I read Galatians without understanding. But Paul said, Paul was a genius who was raised in the Torah, taught at the feet of Gamaliel, a Pharisee of Pharisees, who took a vow after meeting Messiah, the Nazarite vow, Numbers chapter 6, to prove his belief at the command of James at the council in where? Jerusalem. James being Jacob, the blood brother of Messiah. That guy said you don't have to keep Torah? No, I think you misunderstood Paul, which is why Peter says, beware, brothers. He's hard to understand. Because Paul is teaching in his epistles in the New Testament at a doctorate level, and you don't have a kindergarten level understanding of the Torah, but you're qualified to interpret the words of Paul and transgress the word of Elohim, which is literal sin, 1 John 3, verse 4. And praise y'all that first John is written for toddlers, because some of us need it. What more has Ephraim to do with idols? Ephraim being analogous to Israel. It is I who answer and look after him. I'm like a green cypress tree. Your fruit comes from me. Everything you have comes from the Father. Whatever you ask in my name for the glory of Elohim shall be given unto you, says Messiah. People forget that for the glory of Elohim part. Please, Father, give me a Lamborghini. How are you going to serve Elohim with a Lambo? I'm sure there's a way. I can't think of one. I don't know why he won't give me a house. Are you stewarding the one you have now? For the glory of Elohim? He who can be trusted with little can be trusted with much. Your fruit comes from me says Yahuwah. What you have came from him. You came from him. When you turn into worm, worm food, you're going back to him. Your body will turn back into dirt. Genesis chapter 1, Elohim formed the man out of the dirt of the earth, the dust of the earth. Your body will turn back into dirt. Your soul goes back to Elohim. Whether or not it gets to stay there, that's our Revelation 21-ish, 2021 22 conversation. And yes, I have videos on that. There's a search bar for that. Your fruit comes from me. Who is wise and understands these words? There's that wisdom thing again. He is not a wise son. Who is wise and understands these words? Discerning and knows them. For the ways of Yahuwah are straight. Matthew chapter 7 verse 14. Man, I don't know what my wife is cooking in the other room, but it's distractingly delicious smelling. Matthew chapter 7, verse 14. Because the gate is narrow and the way is hard pressed, which leads to life, but there are few who find it. 
For the ways of Yahuwah are straight, and the righteous walk in them. The righteous walk in them. Luke chapter 1 verse 6, definition, definition, New Testament definition in the Gospel of Luke. 1 verse 6, righteousness is blamelessly walking in the commands of Yah. For the ways of Yahuwah are straight, and the righteous walk in them. Well, Jesus' righteousness is my righteousness. What does righteous mean? Blamelessly walking in the commands. So you're saying Jesus is blamelessly walking in the commands. Is your blamelessly walking in the commands? Are you? Depart from me, you who work lawlessness. I never knew you. Matthew 7, 21. Just a few verses from Matt 7, 14 where this is quoted. Depart from me, you who work lawlessness. I never knew you. See, that violates saying that I don't have to be righteous because he's righteous without even knowing what righteousness is with, because you didn't define it from the Bible. That violates one of the Ten Commands, do not take the Lord's name in vain, which is don't put the Father's stamp of approval on your BS because you, you claim to be righteous by the blood of Messiah, but you don't do righteousness because you don't know what righteousness is because you took somebody else's word for what the Bible said rather than reading it yourself. Who is wise and understands these words, discerning and knows them? For the ways of Yahuwah are straight and the righteous walk in them, but the transgressors stumble in them. The transgressors. Sin is what? Transgression of the law. And the transgressors stumble in them. That is... The prophet Hosea from beginning to end. I hope you found some value in this. We will be in Yoel next, which will probably be one video. We'll see, maybe two, maybe three, because there's three chapters. Yas will be done. I appreciate you. I hope you have a blessed day. Shalom.